Welcome everybody to the Monday night call. Uh, congratulations for the intelligent decision of jumping on. You could have been anywhere in the world today, but you are here with us, so well done. Now tonight, with absolutely next to zero <laughs> warning, we've got Liz. We had a quick change of plans, but uh, you know, if you're watching this on the replay, this probably means nothing to you. But just to let you know, who Liz is, if you don't know her, she's the one at every event that is saying woo really loud. She, she's the loudest person in the room, but she brings the fun. I've seen Liz do the craziest, most awesome things, and you just think, wow, like, talk about comfort zone. Um, you could just be miles out of your comfort zone, and Liz is going to be that much further out. So, like, it, it's, it's always something to learn, right? That's right, woo. If you don't know what woo woo is, you're in for a treat because you're going to hear tonight from a master NLP trainer and timeline uh, trainer. That means she trains coaches. She's the host of multiple life changing retreats and she's a former lecturer at Sydney Uni. She uh, was previously in the top 2% of another company. <laughs> so, uh, and she's known as, I read this off your website, okay. The fluffy sledgehammer. I don't know where the fluff is. I know where the sledgehammer is, though. So, um, without further ado, uh, let's just get Liz to take us off mute and take it away. Get your notebooks ready. Hello, everyone. Wow. My bio sounds pretty impressive when I hear it. Um, I don't think about that a lot. So, thank you for that beautiful introduction. Um, and thank you for having me on the call and yeah it was late notice however opportunities come flying at you and if you're ready to grab them then you're always going to win so I guess for me being on this call it was like okay cool Joel yeah sure I can help you out but what am I going to talk about and I thought no I'm just going to go with what my gut's saying right now because there's a lot of people who need to hear this message and it comes straight from my heart, but yes, I am known as the fluffy sledgehammer. There's a lot more sledgehammer than there is fluff. So I wanted to talk about a little, like Joel suggested that I do the truth about woo woo and manifesting and getting what you want. And I was kind of like, mm, I don't know about that, but I am going with that. It's just going to maybe be delivered in a different package to what you expect, right? Cause the universe will always deliver, but rarely in the package that you're expecting it to show up in. So, I wanted to first of all talk about one of the laws in NLP, which is the law of requisite variety. And that particular law states, the person with the most flexibility of behavior will control the system. Now I want you to take away any negatives that you have on the word control and understand it as use. So the person with the most flexibility of behavior will have the most ability to use the system for good, right? So you're able to use it. So what does flexibility of behavior mean? Well, everything is a spectrum or a continuum, right? So it goes from here to here, as wide as you can get your arms. It's really far from one end to the other. And yet society keeps us in a little narrow section of the spectrum where everything's acceptable. So it's acceptable to make lunches for your children, but it's not acceptable to forget to send your child's lunch to school with them. It's acceptable to, uh, well, let's go for the olden days. It's a bit easier. It was acceptable to have dyed hair this color, but it, you know, maybe 20 years ago, it wasn't really acceptable to have blue hair. When I was young, it wasn't acceptable for me to date anyone who had an earring or tattoos. And in fact, my dad, once kicked a boy off our front doorstep because he came with an earring <laughs> and that was very embarrassing because I really liked him. His name was Hamish Dawson and my dad just told him that he wasn't picking me up while he had that thing in his ear. So society puts this little box around what's acceptable and the things that are acceptable at the moment are really challenging for someone who's in my position. So things that are acceptable are depression. Things that are acceptable are anxiety. Things that are acceptable are stress. Things that are, are acceptable are not being able to do what you want when you want. Things that are acceptable are being in a relationship that you're not happy in. Things that are acceptable 
uh, being in a position where you have to do things that you just don't want to do. That's what happens in this small part of the spectrum. So the law of requisite variety allows you to move anywhere along the spectrum. And there's not good to bad or less to more, it's just a spectrum. And so if you can embrace this law of requisite variety, so the person with the most flexibility of behavior can use the system, then you can move along this continuum or this spectrum in a way that's going to serve you to live the life that you wanna live. So how does that play out? Well, here comes the woo-woo. So I wrote on Facebook about two weeks ago what woo-woo actually stood for. Now, a lot of people know me for the woo-woo, and that's one version of woo-woo. But the woo-woo that a lot of people talk about is the, you know, the woo-woo. And what it means is within our openness, we oust, O-U-S-T, obstacles. So that means if you're being open, and open would imply that you're not stuck in the little box. If you're being open, then we're gonna be able to get rid of obstacles really easily and really effectively. So I'm wondering if you're in the chat right now, I would love you to throw some obstacles in the chat because I would love to help you explain or explain to you and help you to work out a roadmap around this obstacle based on being woo woo or using your openness to get around an obstacle. And there's, a principle so not feeling worthy okay Nikki can you remember a time when you did feel worthy was there ever a time and if there is just pop that in the chat if there wasn't that's okay just write no but if there was just tell me a time when you did feel worthy and we'll just explore this a little bit because openness is one of the things that doesn't fit in the box okay because remember a box has sides it's closed that's not open. So Nikki, just let me know what was the time that you did feel worthy. Just tell me the tell me about that time. Like just describe it briefly. So when we're open, we're creating opportunity. When we're shut down, we're limiting opportunity. So if we're feeling not worthy, in some part of our life, we're choosing to be within the box. We're choosing to shut ourselves down. We're choosing to not say what we want to say. To not speak our truth to not be in our power so I wonder next time so when I found my unit and everything came together for me to move in here okay so you were in a powerful position you were moving forward in life you were creating the life of your dreams and you felt empowered <coughs> so I wonder at that time did you feel open were you open to an opportunity and the answer would be yes because if you weren't open to an opportunity you never would have found the unit so I wonder if there's anyone else who's feeling not worthy that finds it really restrictive because usually as soon as we feel not worthy of something, and I know there's other people on this call right now who have told me today that they felt not worthy. So as soon as we feel not worthy, we tend to move everything in and we change our posture as well. So we tend to drop our shoulders. We move our hands in. When we sleep, we sleep in that sort of fetal position. It's the same when we're crying, we get into that little fetal position and we close ourselves down and we shut ourselves down. And what that does is creates worthlessness. Because the people who this little section of the continuum believe are worthy are the people who are external most of the time to that little part. So the people who are sitting in here are going, I'm not worthy, I'm guilty, I can't do it. And the people outside of that, they're looking at them going, wow, that person made so much money. Wow, that person put so many people on in their team in um, multi-level marketing. Wow, that person's business, it just see, they just seem to get all the luck. It just comes and comes and comes. But they're not functioning within the box. They're open. What does open really mean? Taking risks. Now, we're not saying you need to take risks at this ridiculous level, but calculated risks. This is what it takes to succeed. So I wanna run through five principles for success and show you how you can use them to remain open, to embrace the law of requisite variety so you can move up and down the continuum and how you can change your life by literally using five steps. So number one, you need to know your outcome. 
So Nikki, when you moved into your unit, you knew your outcome, right? You knew you wanted to move somewhere. But what's your outcome now? Right now, if you're feeling unworthy, if you're feeling you can't do it, if you're feeling not good enough, what's your outcome? What is it that you really want in life? Because everything's a choice. We tend to mitigate our choices by staying in this little box. But everything is a choice. If you're living in a relationship that you don't want, it's a choice to step out of that box. Sure, it's scary. It might be difficult in terms of money or housing or, you know, it might be painful to leave someone you love that's just not willing to grow and change with you. It's just a choice to step out of that little box and become part of the larger continuum, right? So you have to know your outcome. What do you want? If you want a loving relationship, are you loving yourself? If you want a bigger business, are you doing the work to grow yourself? If you want to have more travel, are you putting the dreams in place? Are you actually looking online and finding out where do I want to go? How much will it cost? What do I need to do to create that amount of wealth that I can do that? Are you creating friendships in other countries so that you can go and stay with people? What are you actually doing? So the second principle, so first of all, you know your outcome. Number two, you need to take action. And this is where the sledgehammer comes in. If you want something and you're not doing anything about it, then I'm going to question, do you deserve that? Do you really deserve it? Now, is deserving about worthiness? No, every single person deserves every single thing that they want. However, if you choose not to take action, if you choose not to take that first step, that's a choice. You decided that. At some point, you decided that you weren't going to take that step. And then when you've taken that step, if you don't take the next step, that was also a choice. You decided not to take that step. So what makes you decide to not take a step? Feelings of unworthiness, feelings of I'm not good enough, feelings that are just feelings. And nine times out of 10, they're based on someone else's opinion, someone inside this little box when the people you're admiring are outside the box. So maybe you should go and get their opinion, not the people in the box that want you to stay the same. And there's a really well-known metaphor for this. If you get a bucket and you put a whole lot of sand crabs in it, the little tiny ones on the beach, you put them all in the bucket. If one tries to crawl out of the bucket, what do the others do? They all try and pull it back down. Everyone in this little bit of the box wants to keep everyone in the box because it's safe. And yes, it is safe to step out of the box. You have to put yourself on the line. You have to take risks. You have to take action. You have to do something. And then you get the people who go, yeah, but I want it, but I just don't know what to do. I just don't know what to do. Well, what if you asked someone? What if you just asked someone? And just said, hey, I don't know the next step. I don't know what it is. And I can tell you in my journey in both businesses, Juice Plus and my NLP training company, I've asked a million people a million questions minimum. Because if you ask great questions, you get great answers. And people want to help you. People outside the box, the ones who are doing it, they want to help you. They have a heart to see people succeed. They have a mind that understands success. They want to help you. So take the first step. And if you don't know what the first step is, that's the first step to find out what it is. How do you do that? Find someone who's done what you want to do before and ask them how they did it. Just ask them. Say, well, what did you do first? And they'll give you the answer. It's literally free information. You can ask them and they will tell you. How do I know this? A long time ago, and I'll tell you this little story to digress for a minute, I was invited to a NAT conference, which is a National Achievers Conference. It was run by, Tony, I think, by Success Resources then as well. And it was Tony Robbins and Richard Branson and a whole lot of other people that I didn't know because they were all in the financial game and that wasn't part of my interest set at the time. And this was in the early 2000s. And I went along and it was good and everything they were selling was thousands and thousands of dollars and I didn't have that much money. So I just ignored the sales pitches and listened to the information, took a whole lot of notes, thought Tony Robbins was pretty cool how he got everyone up clapping and thought Richard Branson was a really interesting guy because he was really quiet on the stage and very humble. 
But that evening, I went with a girlfriend of mine out for dinner at the Vibe Hotel in Rushcutters Bay. And we walked in and who happened to be standing in the foyer? Richard Branson and Tony Roberts. Now, this is before I had a smartphone, so there is no photo proof of this. Unfortunately, it would have been great if there was. And we walked in and Richard Branson said to my friend, who was an Australian volleyball player, hey, what are you girls doing here? And we said, oh, we're just coming for dinner. And he said, well, why don't you join us? And I got to have a two hour dinner with Tony Robbins and Richard Branson. What was interesting to me is that every question I asked, they answered. Every single question I asked, they answered. There was no big secrets. There was no, I'm gonna keep this information to myself. They just answered the questions. Richard Branson has a stutter. He's the most humble, quiet, reserved man. He didn't say much at all. But one of the questions I asked was, I'm not sure how I'm ever going to make money on my own. And he said, the key is to say yes. And this is written in his book. Just say yes and figure out the details later. And that's exactly what I've done tonight. Say yes and figure out the details later. So that would be my one piece of advice. So you're taking action. Now, when you take action, guess what? There's a thing in Australia called the tall poppy syndrome. So you stick your head up or outside the little box, right? And people notice you, which is kind of what you want because you need them to notice you if they're gonna follow you or jump on one of your programs or jump into your business, you need them to notice you. But the other thing that happens when you step out of the box is that people like to chop your head off. And that can come thick and fast. Yeah, it can come thick and fast. And people decide to chop your head off so that they feel better. And they don't feel better in the long run, but while they're in the box, they can't see. Remember, the walls are like this. They can't see past them. They're not actually being nasty. They're trying to protect you. They're the crab in the bottom of the bucket trying to pull you back down. And if they have to cut your head off to get you back in the bucket, they'll do it. They're trying to keep you safe. But safe's not where the magic happens. The magic happens outside the little box. The little box is super safe and boring and not where success lies. So along comes this tall poppy syndrome. People come to cut off your head. And what you have to do is just be open and aware. Because when you start to set goals, it's not the goal that is what you're running for. It's the learning along the way. It's the experience along the way. How many times have you set a goal and as you've got closer to the goal, you're like, eh, actually, I'm not sure if that's what I want. I know I can have that now. So let's take a left turn or a right turn here and go for something bigger, something better, something different. It happens all the time. So the goal setting and going after your goals isn't always about achieving the goal. So don't be disappointed if you don't achieve the goal. It's about getting out of the box and seeing what other possibilities are available to you. Because until you've done the growth to get out of the box and to ta start taking the steps, you're not gonna get further. You're gonna remain stagnant. So you have to remain open and aware to other possibilities. Remember, once you're out of the box, you're in the law of requisite variety. So the more behavioral flexibility you can have, the easier it's gonna to be to get what you want. So behavioral flexibility, what does that look like? Well, just say you wanna sell, I don't know, say you're running a health coaching program and you wanna sell 20 spots in it and you sell one. That can be frustrating, right? Because you've got one person in, so you have to run it but you really wanted to sell 20 and instead of celebrating the one, what you do is you go all crazy and do the I'm not worthy because only one person jumped in. What if the lesson is in that one person that jumped in? And I know so many people that get to this point and then they cancel the event, they cancel whatever it is. That's not how it works. You keep going because the lessons and the learning is in the keeping going. It's in the doing right? You have to keep going. You have to keep doing it. You advertise that event until the hour before it starts. You get on live videos. You put yourself out of your comfort zone, out of your box, and you push for what you want. Now people say to me, oh, but the feminine needs to be in flow. I'm going to challenge that. The divine feminine totally understands the balance 
between the feminine and the masculine and can move between the two with ease and grace. She knows when to be heart-centered and in flow. She knows when to be focused and directed. That is behavioral flexibility. That is what keeps you out of the box and moving anywhere you choose along the continuum. The last thing, step number five, is to operate from a physiology and a psychology of excellence. Now, is this what I do all the time? Hell no. Joel knows. I get on the phone and bore my eyes out and go, oh my God, I can't do it. So find yourself a friend that is willing to listen to that part because it's important to express that particularly if you're a woman because guess what? You've just flipped into the feminine where you've got all this energy that needs to be released and you, there's, one, there's two ways of releasing it. Either you get angry or you get sad. That's how the energy comes out. So go release it. Either do exercise, find a friend, talk to the friend, let it out and allow yourself a particular time to have this meltdown, if you want to call it that, right? You don't do 20 minutes of crying, 20 minutes of carrying on. You don't do that. That's just ridiculous. And I know people who do it for days. You allow yourself a particular time. For me, it's now down to about two minutes most of the time. Most of the time, I don't do longer than two minutes of the carry on. If I'm doing it for longer than two minutes, then I'm looking at what else am I missing here? What else is the key here? Okay. And I literally, for me, I just go, but here it is. Here's the problem. Okay. Now it's out. Now I can see it. Let's deal with it. Obviously I'm an extrovert. I need it out here to be able to see. Introverts will take it in but even introverts can do this in a short period of time. So I encourage you to look at what is your current downtime? When you hit a challenge or an obstacle, what is that time? How long are you spending in the downtime? Work out what it is and just aim to shorten it by five minutes each time because these things come and go. You're never going to not have those challenging times. The roller coaster goes up and down. You have to ride it the whole time. So enjoy the ride. Don't do that more than two minutes once you get it down to that. And I'm not saying if you're doing currently doing a whole day of feeling down, you're not going to get it down to two minutes straight away. So just push it back for five minutes, an hour, whatever you can manage slowly and surely. And then it's going to help you get out of the little box. <coughs> What's a physiology of excellence? Well, that's about how you stand, how you sit, how you conduct your life. So if you're sitting there like this, that's not a physiology of excellence. That's a physiology of I'm bored. Am I really getting value from this call? Is she saying anything that someone else hasn't already said before? But if you're sitting up and you're listening attentively and you're writing notes and you're thinking about what this means for your life, that's a physiology of excellence. Physiology of excellence doesn't mean you need to be totally buff and a gym junkie. It can mean that but it doesn't have to mean that a physiology of excellence doesn't mean that you have to have no health problems. It can mean that, but it doesn't have to mean that it means that you're always moving towards always moving towards your goal. You're not moving away from what you don't like. You're moving towards what you want. So with those five principles, I'm just going to recap. You need to know your outcome. You need to take action you need to remain open and aware to the possibilities. You need to have behavioral flexibility and you need to operate from a physiology and a psychology of excellence. If you can do that and stay in the woo woo, remember within our openness, we oust obstacles. If you can be open while you do those five steps, then nothing's going to stop you. The minute you start to shut down, that's when you're going back in the bucket with the crabs, right? That's when the box starts to come. That's when the walls to the box are no longer transparent. The walls to the box are solid. So as soon as those walls start to be transparent, you be that crab and you take enough action to jump over those walls so that you can have access to the whole continuum of available options. Because once you have options, you can achieve anything. If you can't go left, but you have enough behavioral flexibility to go right and see what's there, 
rather than just going, I can't go left, bang, bang, bang. If you go, oh, oh, here, there's a bit of flow here. Go that way and see what's there. Because the universe is working for you every single day. Every day when you wake up and say, this is what I want, the universe is getting it for you. It just doesn't come in the package you expect. So if anyone's got any questions, chuck them in the chat. I'm, I'm going that way because that's where it is for me on my computer. I don't know where it is for everyone else. Maybe it's down there if you're on a phone. Um, throw them in the chat. But there's one last thing. Being scared, being nervous, being anxious is all just about a physiological feeling. The sweaty palms, the racing heart, the shortness of breath, the... <gasps> I encourage you to think about this. What does excitement feel like? Because when I'm excited, I've got the sweaty palms, I've got the racing heart, I've got the shortness of breath, and I'm there going... <gasps> and that's how I do it. If you can reframe yourself and every time you feel nervous or anxious, get excited and realize that this is excitement. This is what you're built for. This is what you're made for. You're made for excitement. Then you're going to achieve more. So how do you know what to grab? There's a million opportunities. How do you know which one's for you? Well, let me tell you, once you get out of this box and you're standing on the edge at either end, you've got clear vision of those opportunities coming in out of the quantum field. Right? You can see it. You've got clear vision of what the quantum field's delivering. And as those opportunities come in, all you have to do is just go, yeah, I'll have that one. And I'll have that one. And no, that one can go past. But I'll have that one. And you get choices. But when you're in the box, they all come across the top of the box and kind of just go, boom. And so it, it's like overwhelming for people. So if you get out of the box, if you step outside what's normal, if you take action, then you're going to achieve everything that you want in life. And that's pretty much all I have to say. <laughs> amazing. That was amazing. Uh, did you get the sledgehammer part, guys? <laughs> that's amazing. I love that call. Um, honestly, uh, guys, where's the questions? Because like, I hear a call like this and I'm thinking, well, this brings up questions, right? Don't like, usually this is the part where Liz is on the call and she asks the question. So who's going to be Liz? I'm going to volunteer Bronwyn because I know Bronwyn can ask questions, but she, was she sitting like this or was she sitting up front and doing notes? <laughs> I couldn't see. I'm listening for once. I've got a question. I reckon I do all that. I rec seriously reckon I do all that. And I'm still stuck. Seriously stuck. I don't reckon I could sell... I couldn't sell a fur coat to everyone in Bendigo at the moment. It's freezing. I just, I just feel really stuck. Maybe I'm pushing too hard. I don't know, but I just, I don't well, know. Go language on you there. With that freaking sledgehammer again. Okay. <laughs> language. Number one, you're saying you're stuck. Yes. Your unconscious mind will believe whatever you tell it. I know all that. <laughs> I know. Yep. So okay. First of all, change I don't language. really feel. Okay, let's reframe it. I actually seriously don't feel stuck. Just nothing's really moving for me, maybe the way I want it to. <laughs> Secondly, you said that you couldn't sell anything to anyone in Bendigo. Right now, yep. And what I'm interested in is the limitation that you've placed on yourself by needing to sell in Bendigo. I didn't so know, you've not consciously that. done that, but unconciously, that's what you're saying. Yeah, I said I couldn't sell a fur coat to anyone in Bendigo at the moment. I said I can't sell anything, but the reference was Bendigo because it yeah, was cold. Yeah, because it's cold, right. Yeah. So yeah. do you need to expand your network and your reach? Is this something, looking at something different? Is it looking at a different demographic? Is yeah. it changing the goal slightly? And yeah. the next thing I'm going to say, Bronnie, because I love you and I know you well, <laughs> how specific are you being with that goal? What exactly is it? It's probably a bit vague. Yeah, it has a lot of fingers in it, I guess, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. So get specific on your goal yep. and come back to me and then I'll help you out. Now, Nicole, what did you ask? Number one tip for getting out of your own way. Okay, so, Nicole, sometimes we create the box ourselves. 
Sometimes it's not the societal box. Sometimes it's just a box that we create for ourselves. So my advice for getting out of your own way is probably centered in meditation. So the first thing you need to do is understand what is it that you actually want. And if you can't spend some quiet time with yourself and understand what you want, then that ants, you're just running after something that someone else wants or something that someone told you you want. So you need to get centered and grounded and really tap in to what it is that you want. Are you running after what you want? Because if you're not going for what you want, you'll create your own box every time. So you need to get really clear on what it is that you want. And when you do that, you then need to be willing to take action because a lot of people say what they want and don't take action. But a lot of people, because they're scared of the action, limit themselves by creating a box and they create the I'm not good enough, I can't possibly do it, who the hell do I think I am because they're scared of the action. The action might make me too busy. The action might mean that I can't rest as much. The action might mean that someone actually joins my team and does work and then I need to understand stuff. Well, I've got a team of 35 people now and I have no freaking idea about the comp plan in this business. I really don't. I just ring up head office and go, uh, I think this person did something. Do I need to do something? And they tell me. Right? I, have, I have no idea. I don't need to know. It's not part of my priority right now. And a lot of people will say, play to your strengths because that box you'll create in your limitations rather than your strengths. My strength is in communication with people. My strength is in networking with people. My strength is in going, woo -woo. Like My strength is not in understanding the compensation plan and the numbers. It's great if you can. I'm not saying that that's an un like it's not a useful skill. If you get it, kudos to you. Because I can sit and be trained and trained and trained on it and I still don't get it. That's not my strength. I don't need to play there. There's other people in the team that can help me do that. Work as a team. Work out who your supporters are and throw stuff to those. You know, Linda Evenden says, do dump delegate. Well, the number of stuff I dump, that goes to, oh, I delegate. It goes to the head office. It goes to someone else. So whatever it is you're trying to achieve, stop creating your own box. Allow your box to be open. And when the other limitations come, connect with someone who's dealt with them before. Is that helpful? Cool. Awesome. Anyone else got anything? I also got a question. I'm looking. <coughs> one. Okay, so I, I've got a question. Probably wouldn't so much have anything to do with the people on the call because I know they get it. But maybe some, maybe we know people that would make if they heard this call would make the excuse like it's all right for you, Liz. You're an extrovert. It's all right for you. You've got this successful coaching business. You know you don't know what it's like for me. Yeah. Say to those people, how can you help them? That's a whole nother call. Um, but what I guess, I guess what I would say is that this, this comes down to the seasons, which happened to be a post that I put on Facebook today. Don't compare your winter to someone else's spring and summer. So the seed gets planted and it needs to feed itself and it feeds itself by creating roots first. And the roots go out and they get nourished and the little seed gets nourished and it gets nourished and it gets nourished. And every time you jump on a call, you're getting nourished. Every time you jump on a juice plus call, you're getting nourished. Every time you talk to your coach, you're getting nourished. Every time you go to an event and let me tell you, there's loads of free events that you need to just tap into and go to, you're getting nourished. That's your winter. As you start to grow and push your way through the dirt, that's the end of winter. So it gets really hard before the end of winter, before the end of winter, you're kind of going and trying to really push out and you're expanding boundaries. And I, I have a, a thing that I use called the fat ladies underpants metaphor. And, and um, what it is, is if you imagine a really big old pair of granny underpants, right? They have to be beige. They have to have the really thick elastic. They have to be the ugliest undies you've ever seen. If you imagine them, when you first put your undies on, they're kind of tight and they stay up and the band is really constricting. But as they get loose and worn and you get used to it, 
then the band starts to expand. So a lot of people talk about you've got your comfort zone and the magic happens over here. Your comfort zone is actually the undies. It's really tight and safe. And then the undies stretch. And then they kind of get comfortable. So then you have to stretch them a bit more. And then you have to stretch them a bit more. And eventually they'll break and you need a new pair of undies and then it goes being tight again. So I kind of call it expanding the band. So if you're someone who is in your winter, if you're expanding that band, trying to come out through the soil and start to be in your spring, stop comparing yourself to someone who's done that part of their journey or that part of their adventure and realize that this is just the beginning for you. Now, winter is not always at the beginning of your business either. Winter can come five years into a business. You know, five years into a business, you can look and you might have hundreds of people in your team or hundreds of people in your staff. And all of a sudden, it's just not resonating with you anymore. And it just kind of feels like, God, do I just keep going? What am I doing? And you need to go back under the ground and get nourished again. And you nourish yourself. And then you come back out again and you hit spring again. The seasons keep coming. Gain your certainty in the seasons. Stop looking for certainty in spring and summer. Get your certainty in winter. Know that if you feed yourself, you will grow. And just keep tapping into that. So that would be the advice I'd give to someone who thinks that I haven't been in winter. Um, my winter lasted a good 10 years. And, <laughs> and it was horrific. And like I said, that's a whole nother call. Um, but if you're comparing your, your winter to someone else's spring and summer, I encourage you to, you know, just dive deeper into the earth and get that nourishment that you need and, you know, keep growing. Outstanding. So among all of your accomplishments, which makes you most proud so far? Oh, <laughs> wow. So oh, can I have two? Okay, we know Simon's one of them. <laughs> got, you, got your back, Simon. Bringing Simon home from her needing to go to work and having that him as my partner is obviously one. The other one was um, a long time ago when I was a nurse, I chose out of school to do nursing instead of medicine and it was a choice for me. I got into both. And I chose to do nursing because I had a belief that as a woman... I would better serve my family, my community by being a nurse rather than a doctor. And when I was about five years into nursing and I'd had, or maybe it was a bit longer than that, maybe 10 years, and I'd had my children, a doctor said to me, well, you're just a nurse. And I went, really? I said, I'm pretty sure that I probably know more than you. And I stood up for myself and, you know, maybe I was a little bit more brazen then. Um, I'm pretty, <laughs> if you can imagine that, maybe I was more aggressively brazen then. Uh, and I just went, I'm pretty sure I know more than you. And in fact, you know what, I'm going to prove it. And he went, what? And I said, I'll go sit the GAMSAT this year and I'll, and I'll prove it to you. And I went and sat the GAMSAT, which is the graduate entry for medicine. Um, and I got in and I chose not to study medicine because it was just about proving a point. But I, <laughs> I, I got in and I'm not into proving points anymore. <laughs> I don't need to do that to validate myself. But at the time, it was a really big thing for me to get that letter from Sydney University to say, you know, congratulations, you got in. What that led to 10 years later was actually me lecturing in medicine at Sydney Uni as a nurse, which is unheard of. Um, I'm the only nurse in Australia to ever have lectured in the Faculty of Medicine at Sydney Uni. Everyone else is a doctor. And I'm really proud of that. I also brought epigenetics into the curriculum and uh, then that got booted out really quickly. So that lasted for about six months until someone realized that I was teaching it. So, <laughs> um, but, it, but that, yeah, that would be my biggest accomplishments. And, and some people will go, what about your kids? Yeah, I love my kids too, but he only gave me two. There's lots of accomplishments that I'm super proud of. And you know that I'm always going to just ask the next question. So she just skipped it. She knows I'm going to ask. Um, <laughs> and, and this proves that I don't need to know anything about all the stuff that Juice Plus does for us because I just get them on a three-way call with Liz. <laughs> See? <laughs> um, simple. <laughs> it's so simple. Uh, so with everything you do, 
What brings you the most joy, even with all the hard work? Uh, you know what? It's seeing someone else blossom into everything that I can see in them before they can see it themselves. It's, it's seeing someone, look, I'll get emotional about it. You can't ask this question without me getting emotional. It's seeing someone who's completely broken, who doesn't believe in themselves, who's lost all faith in everything they think they aren't. You know, they think they aren't anything. And if I can take that person and shine a light in the places that are dark and help them to create money or to create passion or to create joy in their life, that's what brings me the greatest joy. And that's why I don't work. Like I run a really big business. I don't work. I just live in my heart space and I live what I love, you know? And yeah, there's a lot of hard work and yeah, there's days that I've rung Joel and gone, Oh my God, how am I going to ever get this done? But I still do it. I still get it done. I still run towards what I want because, you know, like there's a woman that's actually in the team. She's not on the call tonight that, took a chance on me when I was a brand new coach and worked with me and completely changed her life. And then she came and did training with me after I became a trainer. And on the weekend, she ran a workshop for competitive shearers in Australia. Now she never thought she was going to do that, but the best bit was getting a phone call on Sunday afternoon going, you know what, Liz, I just stood there and I delivered it and they changed, they changed. And so it's not about me and the people I impact. It's about the people who I impact impacting more. It's, it's the ripple effect. Yeah. It's about how big this can be when we just invest into others and watch others grow. The, the impact is massive. It's, it's absolutely massive. So yeah, that's what makes me cry. <laughs> and like, that's why you're, you are and you will continue to be so amazing at this business. Yeah. You know, like it's what we're following. Like we're following people like Linda, aren't we? Yeah. That, that, that live by that as well. And like what a, what a legacy we can create. Like, so congratulations. Like that's so amazing. So like, I want to talk quickly before we get to the last two questions. I want to ask you a question with regards to burnout. You know, you, you work, you work, like you said, you've got multiple businesses yeah. Uh, and it's no small task to, to actually to put on a NLP training to do uh, mm -hmm. retreats and have it all done and still have a, a successful uh, marriage and have kids and dogs and all the stuff that goes on and then still build this amazing business and have time to jump on at a moment's notice to do a call. Like, <laughs> that's, that's, that's impressive by anyone's measure. Like, how do you maintain that? and um still still uh yeah keep going how do you really build? solid really solid rituals really solid rituals and i used to laugh at people who told me you need to do rituals i used to think there's no way you get up every day and do that you just don't but i do <laughs> um and nothing gets in the way of that and so meditation is one of the things i do every day uh some form of exercise I do every day and at least 45 minutes. Um, the biggest thing is what Simon and I do in the morning. So we make a ritual and it doesn't matter where we are in the world because often we are in different parts of the world. We ask each other these amazing questions that I learned from Kirek Ashley and they start with, what am I grateful for today? The next question is, what do I love more about Simon today than I did yesterday? what do I love more about myself today than I did yesterday? Now, let me tell you, that question is hard. There are days where I get to that question and just go, oh my God, I've got to come up with an answer. And, you know, I don't think I did very well yesterday. I don't think I achieved much yesterday. So what do I love more about myself today than yesterday? And sometimes it's literally what I love today is that I'm actually doing this even though I don't want to. You know, it can be as simple as that. Then the next question is, what do I love more about my kids today than yesterday? Um, we've got six teenagers, so sometimes that's a challenge to answer as well because <laughs> they're fun. <laughs> um, and, and then the next thing is we do, uh, what are three ways that I can make money today 
or the three ways that I can make money in the future and to impact more people. So we've literally got almost a Bible full of ways that we could make money. And some of those ways are ridiculous. And, you know, it's literally crushing up rose petals and putting them in water and selling perfume to people down the street, which I used to do when I was five. Um, and some of the ideas have been brilliant and have turned into retreats and turned into workshops and, you know, you run with it. So those rituals are really, really important to me. And drinking water. People forget to drink water. Like, you need to drink it. Because A, it makes you get up. If you're running a business from home, if you're drinking enough water, it's going to make you get up and go to the toilet because it's really easy to sit in front of your computer, sit on your phone and not do anything. So drink water. Um, the other thing is it helps flush your system, all the other health benefits of water, obviously. But yeah, that would be the things that I do. And that is just like to me, what I heard about that was um, the man version. The simpler version is you show up every day. Yeah. You show up every day no matter what. Even yeah, when no you know, said you don't feel like it, even though I don't want to. Yeah. That's that's super important. And I think that's like one of the major parts of any successful person I've seen. And no, yeah, no, another reason, no wonder you was you're so successful. So thank you. If you had a superpower, what would it be? Oh, I forgot that you were gonna ask that one. That's right. I knew you'd be prepared, so I'm trying to throw you a few curly ones. Oh, um, okay, a superpower. It would be, and I can't think of the word, um, the beam me up Scotty thing. What is that called again? Where you can travel, not astral travel. I want to say astral Teleporting? Travel. Pardon? Teleporting. Teleporting, yes. Teleportation would be my superpower. You can't, you can't talk about astral travel because that's another call too. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was half thinking that that's what tonight's call is going to be about. Oh, I was going to take it down the woo-woo and then I thought, meh, not for the first call. Part two, okay. Credibility the first time. <laughs> okay. Um, and I don't know, like, um, if, you, if you had a Facebook ad that the entire world would see, yep. what, what would the message be? <laughs> Is, the, is it the message that's important or how much I could invest in the ad? <laughs> well, the funny thing is, like, I thought, well, nobody looks at billboards, but everyone looks at Facebook. So I thought I'd change it so I was a little bit curly Wait. for you. Okay. There you go. It would say this. The world is what you make it. Actually, this is worth writing down. The world is what you make it. Dream big. Take action. Love fearlessly. Inspire yourself and live a fabulous life. When I, the biggest the part of that is love fearlessly. You know, if you love someone and someone's hurt you in love, don't stop loving, just love. Because the only way you're gonna heal yourself is to keep loving. And you don't need to love that person anymore, but don't let what happened to you put that block in your heart. Just keep open. Stay in the woo-woo. Amazing. How good was that? That was a good one, wasn't it? <laughs> that, that one needs to be written down. And who, who do you know that needs to hear that? Maybe you could tell them and then when they say, oh, wow, that's amazing, you could share this call with them. Because <laughs> that was a good one. And um, Liz, I don't know if uh, Zuckerberg will approve that ad. I'll have to let you know later. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what a cool guys! Thank you all for showing can up. I jump in real quick. You can. Oh. <laughs> Hello, welcome back. Hey, hey, Lizzie, I just wanted to say I'm at work, but I just wanted to say, and I'm sniffing around with my earphones in my ears. Um, what an amazing call that was! That was fucking awesome. I loved it. I loved Thank it. <laughs> Thanks, so, um, Yeah, I just wanted to just. Chuck that in there because I haven't seen you for a little while, but um, yeah, it's good to see you. And thank you for that. I that was I needed that, and I want to hear about the woo woo. I want to hear the woo woo stuff. We'll do that <laughs> on a future call. <laughs> awesome. All right, I gotta go. But anyway, who else loved the thank call? You so much. That was Christine. awesome. Who else hey? loved the call just as much as Christine? 
Let, let's take it. Take yourself off mute and let's do some Liz Woo Woo. Show her how Woo Woo's done, huh? Woo 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 Woo